right, welcome back. Welcome back to our uh, after school series for Smart Notebook. I am actually looking for my picture in picture to make sure I can see um, what I'm sending you. There we go. I am Linda McDonald with Data Projections, and I'm going to do a short introduction to the new Smart Notebook 11 software. If you'll make sure that you are in our online chat, I believe we have Barry Elementary connected from Houston ISD. We have Greg Elementary connected from Houston ISD, and we have Lumberton ISD friends back again. We love our Lumberton friends because you guys have been consistent partners with us. We are recording this session. If you want to view it later, we, it will be added to our Data Projections YouTube channel. If you go to um, YouTube and search for data projections. You'll find our channel will be listed under smart technologies for education so um, if you need any assistance with Getting the smart notebook 11 software installed on your computer Please see our wiki that was included in the invitation the wiki address and there will be YouTube videos and a set of instructions for you if you need to have that software added I'm just going to walk us briefly through the tutorial if you want to access the tutorial independently, if you'll go to help, there's the tutorial. It's the third item listed. It is exactly this file. So we're going to just jump through the new features that are in Smart Notebook 11. You'll notice that the toolbars are much, much more user friendly. We really, really like them because they have become really, really intuitive for the end user. You have your actions, which is the first section. Then you have your tools, and as I select a tool, I have a contextual panel that pops out that gives me additional abilities for each of the tools. So much, much more intuitive. You can still use the properties tab here to make adjustments in anything that you have a preference for. We have an activity builder, and that's our next chunk. Mr. Teeter's going to go over um, activity builder with you. There is an, a built-in internet browser. So if I added a new blank page, I can insert now an internet browser, and I can scroll down and set exactly where I want this browser to go. So I could put Google, or I can put my library web page. But the benefits of this is that as you're directing students to an internet web page, they're not having to leave your smart notebook lesson. The other benefit is if I'm in a two-page view and I have an internet browser here, I can drag and drop a picture straight from that internet browser onto my page. So imagine working on an activity where you have maybe little bitties, kindergarten kids or third graders doing a, a animal research project where they're grouping one group does mammals and one group does reptiles you can find a, one of those high interest animal websites and they can just make a collage of all the mammal pictures and the next group does a collage and all they have to do is drag and drop right from that embedded browser and you'll notice that anything that has to do with the display now is underneath this one display button so much more intuitive also, they've improved the text. So as I go to text, my contextual panel right here allows me to change the font so much more easily. I also have the ability to do bullets, to um, tab, do tab text, superscript, subscript, change the color right here, change the font size, change the font type. So much, much more intuitive for you. We love this one. Under the pen, all of our pens, remember we used to have all those different kinds of pens and nobody could remember what the name of the pen was and what each specific pen did. All of the pens now are clustered in one button with a contextual tool. So once I have the contextual tool that pops out, here are my types of pens. And the new pen that they've added for us is the crayon pen. Is there anything more relaxing at the end of a stressful day than just to do a little bit of coloring? So um, one of the benefits is, you know, you, some of us are thinking middle school kids, why do they want to color? Because they're middle school kids. It is that high interest and, you know, you have some kids that need 
that feedback, that motivation to get them to draw a picture. It might be a scene from a book that they're reading. So um, actual, actual benefits for in quality instruction. We also have the ability to fill irregular shapes or shapes that you have drawn yourself. So I'm going to get my selection tool and I'm going to choose the cloud. I'm going to find my paint bucket and let's make it a lovely blue color. And there I was able to fill my cloud, choose a yellow color, and I can choose the lightning bolt that I've drawn. So any um, single stroke enclosed shape allows you to fill, um, which is a new feature. What else is new? Oh, every teacher that I've trained this fall has absolutely loved this. So I have some objects here on my board. I'm going to select them by drawing a rectangle around. We call that marquee select. That's just fancy words for draw a rectangle around it. I select one of them, and as I just shake it gently, it's going to group those objects together. So now they move in tandem in one object. If I want to ungroup them, I shake it again, and it ungroups the objects. The same thing with words. Here's a single word. If I shake it, of course, it's not going to work for me today. Okay, it doesn't work for text. Sorry I lied about that. So, and the tutorial will actually show you a small video. But if you are trying to group things like you have a number and you want your number to appear on top of a shape, but when students move them together, it could be a shape with a label, a vocabulary term with a picture, just a super easy way to group those together for interactivity for students. Another new feature underneath the page properties, any of the pages, I have a reset page button. So when I click reset page, I will get a pop-up that tells me it's going to reset that page to the last saved state. So if I click reset page, it goes back. It took away my crayon mark that I added. If I clicked reset page here, it's going to take away the fill colors that we added. So great benefit for that one if you have multiple groups coming up to the board to repeat an activity. Let's say you had some sort of worksheet or vocabulary matching activity that you had locked on your page and you wanted students to ink on top of it or match, draw lines to match or fill, it, fill in the blanks. You click reset page and it's ready for the next group or the next class period that you're working with. Fading ink, okay? Again, ink, we, that connotates pens, so I'm going to go to my pen tools, and that fading ink works with the magic pen, but I now have the ability to do this with any pen, okay? So there is a pen mark, but if I click on my properties tab and I go to fill effects, I now have the ability to enable ink to fade after I write it. So let's say I want to change the blue pen so that when I use the blue pen, it's going to fade after three seconds. Sector changes. Oh, sorry, Mr. Teeter reminded me because I always forget this step. At the very bottom, it says <coughs> Save Tool Properties. So now as I write with my blue pen, maybe I was making a list of spelling words. Watch it not. Oh, it did disappear. Making a list of spelling words and I wanted to give students a visual cue. We were doing a review for a test and I wanted them to see what the answers look like. Any of that prompting for some of your kids whose English isn't their first language. Really great strategy to use with those kiddos. Um, especially for our little ones who don't have vocabulary already built in or can't read instructions and you want to make them independent on the board. I can now select an object. If I have my selection tool, I can select an object. And I can add sound. That is not a new feature. That feature was available. But what's new about adding sound is that I can record straight here from my smart board. Remember that your smart board is just a big, giant remote control for your computer. So you need to have some sort of microphone plugged into your computer to capture this sound. So all I have to do is click start recording. 
really click start recording and I'm going to speak loud and clear so that my microphone on my laptop picks this up. I'm going to click stop recording. I can attach the recording to the corner or to the object. And so now when a student selects that, that could have a series of instructions on it. It could be a vocabulary term. It could be something where you have a word in English and you record the Spanish version. Okay, moving on. Remember, if we don't have a chance to walk through quickly the tutorial, it is there for you under the help tutorial. So we're just running through the features that are new in Smart Notebook 11. When I used to train on Smart Notebook 10.8, I never spent much time on the tables tab because it never worked the way you want it, wanted it to. Much, much more intuitive. I just drew a, a four by four square. If I touch any of the boxes, it resizes kind of like you anticipate it resizing. In order to make big changes to the whole entire chart, you do have to do a marquee select. One of the things that you guys will really like is the ability to adjust the size and make the square, the cells all square. And I'm going to change our view so I see the entire page. There we go. Pick those up a little bit. I can now add a table shade to each of those. I'm sure there's somebody thinking, that just looks like the old concentration game. So let's match up this one and this one. Okay, no, those don't match. How about this one and this one? That could be a vocabulary term matching with a picture. It could be a number matching with a dot system or picture quantity. So you guys will fill in the content that best matches your needs. Toolbar customization. If you want to do anything with this toolbar, this standardized toolbar that appears here, we have added a pin the page button here because that's a feature that we really, really like to take advantage of. To customize your toolbar, all you need to do is click the gear. And I'm not going to do it because half the time it freezes my laptop because my laptop's cranky. But click the gear and all you need to do is drag and drop your tools there. You can make your tools large buttons like these appear or small buttons depending on how you place it on the screen. I'm going to kind of skip the notebook uh, 2.0 beta, but if you're interested, it is listed underneath the gallery. Haven't spent a lot of time investigating that, but it searches not just the notebook gallery that you have installed in your computer, but the web stuff as well. Two minutes. And smart notebook tips. We talked about the tutorial being there. And these are all old features. So it's really talking. What have I missed, Mr. Teeter? That kind of takes care of it, I think. We kind of went over, but really spend some time playing with the, the pens and much more um, intuitive. So if I'm drawing a picture, a, a Circle, I used to have to go to the properties tab. What I like better about it now is I can pick blue on the, in the inside, green on the outside, and there's my circle exactly the way I want it to appear. So again, you guys spend time in the tutorial reviewing, but I, we think that you're really, really gonna like it. Much more intuitive, it will just make sense to you. And I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Teeter for the activity builder add-on piece. Okay, thanks, Linda. Uh, remember, if you want to see the screen up close, you can go to the website that we talked about uh, just a minute ago, smart.dataprojections.com, and you can get an up-close view on your computer while you're watching this on your uh, TV monitor there. One thing that we have seen added in Notebook 11 is called the Activity Builder. And for those of you who have installed the software, you know that in addition to the uh, previous four tabs, we now have a fifth tab that looks like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle. <clears throat> this is for all of our add-ons. As of this moment, we have one add-on. I think there are a couple that are coming out on, uh, on the Smart Exchange that you can that. download and install. But this one comes equipped. It's really a very, very cool tool to help you. Uh, probably the biggest tip 
or trick that I can give you is to have all your objects on the screen first. Well, okay, what does that mean? Well, let me show you. Very quickly here, I built uh, for you today, I built a lesson. It's a sorting arrangement. And, oops, thank you. I'll turn that and undo. What we want to do is organize these vocabulary words into the correct category of noun or verb. So the first one I have here is sneeze. I'm going to take it over here and put it in the category for sneeze. And you see that I get a little spin out of it and it'll stay right there. I'm going to take apple and I'm going to put that over here in the verb and you see that it doesn't belong there so what happens is it will jump back. One more time. Third time's a charm, no. When I take it over here and put it in the nouns category, you'll see that it'll spin around and it will stick. The opposite happens if I try to put a verb into the nouns category, it pops out. But when I bring it over here and put it in the correct arrangement, and we get the whole exercise here. And like Linda told us before, I can come over here and come back and reset the page, and we're ready for the next student, or the next group, or the next uh, uh, group of kids to come by and work on it, whether you're doing individual or team activities. Now let me show you how I made that using the Activity Builder. I go to my fourth tab, <clears throat> I pulled all of my objects out first. You have to get them here ready to go. So I would like to make a, an activity, we've been talking all week about what different animals eat and what they do not eat. And so I've pulled out <clears throat> five objects here. They all happen to be pictures, whereas a few minutes ago I used objects that happen to be words. Now I have objects that happen to be pictures. When I click on my uh, activity builder, I select my target. So my target is going to be my horse, and I come over here to the left edge and I click on edit. You see that my target has now uh, become highlighted, and I have four objects. I need to determine, is this an accept or a reject? So, most of us, hopefully today, I don't know, it's the first of the week, but I think most of us will agree that horses eat hay. So, <clears throat> I'm going to drag it and drop it into the category that says accept. We also know that horses will eat an apple. So I'm going to drag this object into the box for the category of accept. We also have the reject category. So horses do not eat a house. So I'm going to put that in the reject category. Horses do not eat a car. So I will put that in the reject category. Now before I leave, I will come up here and click on my settings buttons. My two options that I have here are, when accepted, what do you want that object to do? By default, <clears throat> that object will fade away. And so if I pulled the hay over here and it was accepted, the hay would just disappear and the horse would be left there. So I'm going to leave the accepted as disappear. <clears throat> Some of the choices that you have here is to fly away, snap to center, or spin. You may remember a minute ago that when the words were accepted, I had them adjusted so that they would spin and then they would stay visible. So I'm going to have the hay fade away. I'll have the apple fade away. When rejected, what do you want the object to do? Bounce back or just stay where you dropped it? In other words, there's no way to self-check if you leave it 
set for none. So I'm going to say bounce back to its original location. Also, I have a checkbox here. If one of these objects or any of these objects had a sound associated with them, it would also play that sound. <clears throat> so a quick example of what I mean by a sound, Linda again showed you how to make an audio file. So if I had one that was rejected, I could play the audio file attached to it that said, oh, try again, or are you sure about this, or any of those kinds of audio, audio type sounds. All right, so I'm pretty much finished here. <coughs> I'm going to click on done, <coughs> and it's now ready to play. So here we go with our house. I'm going to drop it on the horse, and it pops back. So we can assume <coughs> the teacher has programmed it that horses don't eat a house. I'm going to take my apple and put it on top, and you'll see that the apple just disappeared. It didn't pop back to its category, so we assume that that was correct. Again, here goes the hay, and here goes the car, and the car will be popped back. Now the difference between what you see here and what you saw here this one's a little more involved. I had one category that was accept and reject. We had to accept all the nouns and we had to reject all the verbs. I had a different object, target, that would accept all the verbs and reject all the nouns. Now you say, I don't see any target objects like we saw the horse. Well, actually there is. I played a little trick on you. I don't know if I can even get it to show up or not. There is a white box there that is full and complete in here. So there is actually an object. It's a white box with a white border, and that's required to make this actually work. You have to have some kind of target object. One other trick I've learned, and hey, this is tips and tricks, isn't it? It is tips and okay, tricks. Okay, one other trick I've learned the hard way. These objects here have to be in the correct order. In other words, when you have an object and you go to the pop down, this is send to front, send to back. All of these objects, be sure that they are on the front. You can imagine what it would have been like if I drug the apple and put it under the horse. We would not have known whether it disappeared or not. We just couldn't see it. I pull the house. It's on top. But if I change this and do it the wrong way so that you can see what happens here, you see that the house kind of goes under the horse. It does pop it back and reject it. But if it was the apple, we would have never seen it. So that's a couple of little tricks that we've learned on that. Um, we have not, we were talking about two or three things for our next month's presentation, tips or tricks. We've got a couple of things we'd like to discuss with you over the next few months. If you have a special need, something you haven't quite figured out yet, or something you need uh, help uh, in getting configured or set up, let us know. Chances are very good that that's something we could use here on our tips and tricks and help not only you, because if you've had the question, chances are really good somebody else has too. So, um, Linda, anything else that you can think of that we need to add for today? No, except that we are glad to have you guys join us. Welcome back to the 2012-2013 school year. Can you believe it already? Know that these kinds of sessions are offered to you just as a value-added service from Data Projections because we know that you guys need that constant reinforcement to find quality ways to integrate the boards into instruction in your classroom. If you have a need to have something more thorough, please let us know. We're happy to do a session on site on your campus. We offer sessions here in our Data Projections Training Center, or we can offer a session via video conference that's customized to your needs. So please let us know what you need. Also, 
make sure that you visit our wiki, which is data projections. I can't write fast enough today, can I? Dot PB, like peanut butter, works. Dot com. Find the link for September after school special for a couple YouTube video clips that provide supporting resources for the skills that we reviewed today, as well as instructions if you need help getting the Notebook 11 software installed on your computer. Remember that that is a free upgrade from Smart Technologies for you. There's no additional fee for that. So you definitely wanna take um, advantage of what's available and out there for you, but please let us know how we can help. Thanks again. We'll see you next month.